we do a lot up in here. We educate, we equip, and we empower you. That's right, Camille. We had a ball. We had a ball. We learned a lot of stuff. Listen, if you are uh, what they call older worker, we don't like to use that term. We don't like to use that term over here, right? So 50 years of age and older. If you're not, it's all good. We, we love you. Come on in. Come on in and join us. Right, Sahida? Come on in. Come on in and join us. <laughs> but our goal here is to educate. When you get educated, then you're equipped to be empowered to do the things in your life that you need to do, to live the quality of life that you want to live and to have the things that you desire at our, our big age is what I'm told. <laughs> That's the whole entire goal here, to have a space, a safe space. This is safe, right, y'all? We've been doing this. We've been rocking what, Robin, for years, four, going on five years, d and all of us. Lincoln's in the building. You are here. <laughs> you are here, my friend. So happy to see you. So happy to see you. So yeah, that's why we're here. We're here to inspire, to empower, to uplift, to learn some stuff. Everybody contributes at a high level and we just help each other. So if you're watching the replay or if you're new to us, welcome. We're glad that you are here. Derek said, I'm helping out management. Okay. The the unusual, the usual night management is temporary, unavailable, about to. Okay, got you. Two months. Yeah, okay. I've been seeing you peeking in and out. I got you. I got you. All right, my friend. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. Glad you're here. Listen, y'all, we had a great time. Like Camille was saying, we were learning about, if you haven't joined the Income Investors Network, hit that join button. It's right next to my face on the channel here. And that's on the inside, private membership where we bring in guests. We had a guest in talking about Amazon storefront. I got, so I was sharing with them that I got a girl coming in that's going to talk about building your own call center because listen, we don't want to work hard, right? <laughs> we don't want to work hard. We want to be at home. We just want to do our thing. So I'm, I, I have things for us, our, our demographic, where we can just be at home and create wealth and legacy and all of that. So that's the mindset, the mind frame, I should say, that we're in. That's what we're all about. We don't want to hustle. I use the term side hustle because I know it's, it resonates and it's recognizable by people. But we really want to find something where we can earn some extra income. That's why it's called income. We can invest in some things that are unique and where we don't need a whole lot of money. We can do some fractional investing. We talked a couple of weeks ago, right, y'all, about um, royalties and music. We talked about art. I know one of the things inside of our membership, we're going to be talking about investing in wine. Uh, we're going to do some more talking about royalties as well. So hit that join button next to my face and you will be on the inside as well. So, and we share a lot of stuff out here um, as well on YouTube for absolute free. So Stacy, Jay, hi, 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 hi. <laughs> Jay, you have, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to have someone, you need to be in on this conversation. This girl is phenomenal. She's been doing this for years but think about it being at home and just have your contractors out there like she's gonna break it down so we're gonna talk about that also i got someone coming in talking about um non-emergency um non i know it's n-e-m non-emergency i'm looking at the acronym non-emergency medical transportation that's that's one of the one things we're gonna be talking about so a lot's coming lots coming go ahead and join us um yeah so we can we can talk about that but tonight 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 we're talking about older and unemployed. The reason why I wanted to talk about this is because even looking through my comments on LinkedIn, on LinkedIn somebody must be talking about me over there, <laughs> on YouTube, underneath the video, um, I always read my comments. If you notice, I apply to everybody. And because you never know what people are going through, right? People really talk about what they're going through and what's happening. And so, you know, the least you can do is acknowledge someone and, and, and I just... I, because I've been ignored before, right? We all have, and it don't feel good. And I see a lot of people saying, you know, I've been looking for work, or I'm coming back into the workforce, or I've been out, I had to take a break, or what have you. And it's hard, especially at our age. And so I wanted to share, you know, what's happening in the workforce. I want to show you also, we're going to look at this, this, these comments from a Twitter post on this recruiter that I follow who's in tech. And my hope is that you get some, some strategies and some ideas if this is you, if you're watching the replay, or even if you're currently working, I want you to see the current landscape just so, because like I said at the top of this, this is a space where we get equipped. We want to be prepared before anything. We don't want anything to happen, 
right? But we always want to be prepared, okay? So I want to share my screen and share with you the article that I was reading. This was on um, Yahoo Finance. And again, we're talking about older and unemployed. Let me go ahead and share my screen here. And we're going to walk through this. And then I want to share with you some of the comments, what people are saying, because I think it's also good for us to see we're not in this alone and how other people think through um, some of the things that are happening. Now, I don't think this is, I know this isn't the video, but here's the article. So it's a question and answer. So uh, this lady in care, she's interviewing this person that wrote a book. I encourage you to get the book as well. Older and unemployed, here's how to overcome the stigma and move forward. So she kind of sets it up by saying that, you know, we've heard all about the layoffs with the tech companies, especially if you see right here, it says it's especially hard if you're a highly educated worker, like all of us are. Highly educated, some of you are, right? All of us are highly educated. Even if it's not a traditional education, we've gained education through our experiences, right? So between ages 40 and 65, who has been out of work for more than six months? According to Sharon, this is the person, associate professor of sociology at the University of Massachusetts, the deck is stacked against the most experienced job seekers. And so this is speaking to us because we have the most experience, our age group, our demographic, and then we have the baby boomers who are retiring. So now it's on us. We're up. We're up, right? We're up next. So she says many employers prefer, I'm reading right here, you all, many employers prefer job applicants who are already working. Now, me being in recruiting for, you know, 30 something years, this was recruiting 101. We were taught to find what's called passive candidates. We were, when we recruited and what's called source and go out and find candidates, we only wanted candidates that were working. That's how you, we were taught back in the day, passive candidates. Uh, candidates that are already working. If I'm looking for a financial analyst, I want him already working. Even though unemployed job seekers are most often laid off for reasons that have nothing to do with their performance. So she's basically see, saying that employers prefer job applicants who are already working, even though if they're unemployed, most of the time it's not their fault. Right? And so she's the author of this book, or he's the author of the book, The Stigma Trap, college educated, experienced, and long-term unemployed. The sense is that if someone is good, they would be working. And that is so true. I can attest to that. This is how we were taught and how we were trained. If they're not working, if a, a, a hiring manager, if I would send a resume and Derek wasn't working, let's say he put on there that his last job was 11, 2023, and I sent it over. The first question that a hiring manager would say to me, well, Kelly, well, he not working. Why he's not work? Why is he not working? Well, I, you know, let's find out. <laughs> you know, and that will be my job to pre-screen. You know, Derek to see okay what's going on. And so there was there's a stigma around if you took a career break, if you maybe you're taking care of a, a we talk about a, a a loved one that has an illness, but there is a stigma, and I know that we know this being in the workforce for so long. We're, we're kind of afraid of having a, a gap on our resume. And so they wrote, he wrote this book and in preparation for his book, Sharon interviewed job seekers, recruiters, and career coaches to expose how the bleak stigma of unemployed, um, unemployment batters workers, personal finances, relationships, and mental health. Here's what he had to say about the stigma. So she asked him, what is unemployment? Why is unemployment so precarious for college educated folks at midlife? He said, that's the puzzle of the book. The stigma of unemployment means that as soon as someone loses their job, they're viewed through a different lens, a more skeptical lens. Now, how many of you have felt this or seen this or heard about this or know someone? Drop in the comments. If this has happened to you or you know someone that this has happened to, Let's talk about it, you all. And, and that can make it harder to get a job. And as the length of unemployment gets longer, the stigma increases. This is so true. 
and it stubbornly persists. So the longer you're unemployed, the stigma that's held over you, kind of like that cloud with that Charlie Brown character, it just hangs over you. It looms over you, right? And she said, what nags at you the most? He said, I started thinking about this as only an employer stigma against someone who was unemployed. But then I learned about the network stigma. It's a much deeper thing. It may be most unconscious, but there is a desire to see the world as working in a way that if you do the right things, if you go to a good school, get a college degree, your career will be fine. We tell ourselves that story and we encourage each other to have that story. And we tell our kids this story. The flip side of it is the stigmatizing of anybody who becomes unemployed. So we all know the story to go to school, get a good education, get good grades, and then get you'll, you'll be okay. But we all know this isn't true, right, y'all? We've done the thing. We performed even. And some of us, you watching, may be unemployed. Maybe you've been looking for, I've heard it all, six months, some people. 12 months, 18 months, two years. And so she said, so they're, so they're less than in some ways because they're unemployed. Now that's a really harsh reality. And y'all know we don't sugarcoat over here. And I want you to understand the thought of how we're perceived because I'm in the same age group as you if you're not working less than. But we know how to think of ourselves though, right? We can't help what other people think of us, but I want you to know. He says, yes, it makes us think it must be something wrong that they're doing because otherwise I could be just like them. They are making mistakes. They're not searching for a job in the right way or networking hard enough. Again, this is the mindset and the mind frame of a decision maker Well, something must be wrong with them. How come they haven't found a job yet? They're not networking hard enough. They, they, they're not searching right. He said, I always tell people that networking is the key to getting a job. It's who you know or who they know. But you say not so fast. What's the downside of, not, of networking? He says, networking is the path around the stigma of unemployment because it means in the best case, you get someone to vouch for you, which is so true. You get someone to walk into the hiring manager at his office and say, look, this person would be good. But about half the people I study eventually got back to good professional jobs. And in every case, networking has something to do with it. So if we're thinking about a strategy, if we're thinking about, okay, how do we combat this, Kelly? And he's sharing because he did a study. We saw with recruiters, with hiring managers, with career coaches, and they said, yes, there were candidates that got back to work by telling someone. So this is another reason why we come together, the reason why we have this community. And I always say, share your LinkedIn profile. Even if you're not on LinkedIn, share, share with each other. Listen, y'all, I'm looking for a job. Here's what I do. Here's how long I've been doing it. Robin might say, you know what? They're hiring at my company or I know someone. Or Stacy might say, hey, you all, we're going we're gonna to be hired. But if you don't say anything, you all, leverage your community. Now, about half the people I studied eventually, like you said, got back to good professional work. Networking most easily happens organically when you're working. I find that to be true. If you're already working and you're like, girl, I am so tired of this job. Well, you know, Coca-Cola looking for recruiters. Oh, really? Yeah, they pay. I remember I did that when I had that short stint when I was working for Michael, ja Michael Jackson. What's his name? Magic Johnson's um, staffing agency. And I got the job. And I'm like, hey, y'all, because it was mis we were miserable. It was two other guys there. And I said, hey, y'all, they hiring. They paying $50 an hour. And the guy's name was Damon. You know, he was like, um, well, can I put my resume? And I'm like, yeah, call so-and-so. But the thing is, he never did it. So, you know, it's like you tell people. But anyway, you can't make people do anything. So people who are currently in their professional lives have networking opportunities pop up all the time when they're talking with clients, going to conferences through their work. The unemployed person has no organic opportunities to network. That's true. If you're unemployed, typically you're sitting at home looking for a job. You're really not thinking about reaching out and you're in your mind about being unemployed and the bills. So that's top of mind. 
It's only through very proactive means. It requires trying to find new contacts, new leads, going to networking events. Now, he's, uh, she said, you studied why applicants get rejected for being too qualified. This is where we want to stay. Because this word just, just burns me up, being overqualified. So let's see what he said. So she said, you studied why applicants get rejected for being too qualified. Can you elaborate? Now, how many of you all have been told ever, ever, even if you're not looking right now, that you're overqualified? Y'all know that word burns me up. <laughs> that burns me up. How can you be overqualified? What the heck? That me, that's, let, let me finish let, before I get, get, get on my soapbox. Okay. He said, typically job seekers at first apply for the kind of jobs that they just recently had. Now y'all listen, we're looking for strat. If this is you, if you're, if you're here now with us live, or if you listen, looking at the replay, don't just be entertained. Nobody's here for your entertainment. Get the information that you can leverage and use. He's telling you right here, typically job seekers at first apply for the kind of jobs that they recently had. Are you doing that? Should you be doing that? Let's read on. So people climb up the career ladder. They achieve certain levels of success and they lose their job. They try to get back to the job that they most recently had but if they had achieved a but if they had achieved success, that means there's only a few of those jobs. Did y'all hear that? Even if you're working now and you're thinking about an external move, are you looking for the exact same job, same scope of work, same title somewhere else? Should you be doing that? Is it going to be called the same? Will the scope of work, the job description be the same? Should you open yourself up to whatever they're calling it and whatever other um, tasks are within that job description? That's a question. He said, it's like a pyramid. There are less and less of those high level jobs, the higher you go up. That is true. I can verify that. We talked about this about a month ago. When it comes to director level, VP level, C-suite level, and some managerial or senior manager role, the pool gets smaller and smaller and smaller in terms of job openings. And he says, because they're unemployed, guess what? They're facing the stigma. Over time, they realize that it's very difficult to get back to the position they had. I talked to somebody today today a recruiter back in the day there was a small group of us like if we saw each other it was it was a small group of us he said he said recruiting is not the same i said i keep hearing that and it's not he said i'm having to pivot i said i keep hearing that now these are old school recruiters there's some new school recruiters out there now and sometimes i listen to them on tiktok and there's a couple of them out there that i listen to that had six and seven years and the, what they're sharing is what they're experiencing now. And I'm like, we used to do all of that ourselves. They don't know anything about full life cycle recruiting. It's kind of like our kids now have a phone. Back in the day, we didn't have a phone. <laughs> we was outside playing tag. We wasn't inside gaming. So they have no concept or idea about playing outside. Same way, I think about it. And so when I was talking to him, he said, yeah, it's, it's totally different now. So I want you to think about the stigma that's being placed over all of us if we're unemployed. Over time, they realize that it's very difficult to get back to the same position they held. So what I want you to think about is, should you be going back to the same position you held? Yeah, I know. We think about the money. That's the only reason why we work anyway. So that means we need to cast a wider net, right? When Jesus said, throw out your net, he said, Cat, go wider. <laughs> go wider. Maybe it's not called that over there now. Maybe you've been in your job for 8, 9, 10, 12, 15, 18, 22 years. That ain't the title no more. All right? So they say, all right, I'm going to take a step back and apply for the kind of job that is more, much more plentiful. But maybe it's a position, here I am right here, I held five years ago. Oh, okay. Is this a strategy, you all? Maybe I shouldn't be applying for the same job. Maybe because I'm not catching anything, 
in this net. I'm not catching anything. I'm throwing my net out there. I'm not catching anything. Maybe I need to think about the job a different way. I know I used to be a PM, but now I'm a senior PM. Maybe I just need to go back to being a PM. Maybe there's more, there's more jobs. That's a bigger pool. But sometimes we let our ego get in the way and we don't want to do that because of the title. But I ain't never seen a title pay for nothing at Target. What about you? And that's when employers come back with the, you're, you are overqualified. So there's a hurdle if we do go backwards. Recruiters told me they think that the job seeker will not be happy because they have already attained a higher level and are looking to leave right away. Even if the job seeker says to me, no, I really, at this point in my life, I am fine taking the position. There is no chance to rebut it in most cases because you're not invited for an interview. This is where it's so frustrating for the job seeker. They want to rebut it, but they're just screened out. We're going to talk a little bit more and I'm going I'm to see what y'all saying because I want you to get this because I know all of us have heard this and I don't want you to get frustrated. I want you to have a strategy. Does you no good to get emotional about it? It is what it is. Let's talk through it. Isn't saying overqualified often also, also lingo for age bias? What y'all think? Yes. Or yes. <laughs> yes. The people who tend to be falling into the overqualified category also tend to be older workers. I'm right here. Y'all see it. Because, you know, it takes many years to get to this high level position where you have a lot of qualifications. That's where overqualified comes from. Many years of qualifications. But we get penalized for that. And you're more likely to get trapped in overqualification. When I talk to the recruiters, they distinguish between their age concerns and their overqualification concerns. So not only do we have to worry about our age, but now being deemed or stigmatized of being overqualified. The age concerns are that the person is going to be difficult to manage because they're older. Ain't that a truth? And we so easy breezy, aren't we y'all? I just think that's a trap. <laughs> Difficult to manage because they're older and less flexible. I just so highly disagree. And look, check this out. They may not have as much energy. How much energy we need? How much energy we need, y'all? They may not fit culturally as well with my younger workers. This is what employers are saying, y'all. We don't have no energy. And guess what? For, for If you're watching, they deem older as starting at 40, not 50. So listen, you won't have no energy. I'm telling you right now, Loretta, you don't have no energy. You may not fit culturally, Stacey, and you may not fit with my younger workers, Fabiola. I'm telling you. Guess what? And they may not have kept up with technology. And you're not tech savvy, Linson. And guess what? I ain't done. They may leave soon because they want to retire. <laughs> I just think it's a trip. Now, these things are rebutted by research, absolutely rebutted by research, because it's not true for everybody. You could say some of this about the young people not having energy. I mean, my daughter loves to sleep. I don't know about y'all. <laughs> I ain't never seen nothing like it. And we know these are myths and older workers actually stick around longer than younger workers. Hello, who are trying to stop, trying to job hop to, to strategically move in their career. Like we come from a loyal era. The thing that is most cruel about the overqualified moment is the thing that people are most proud of, their achievements, their advanced degrees, and their successes in their career now are coming back to bite them. What y'all saying? How we feel about this? How we feel about this, y'all? Listen, they're saying all these things about us. We don't have no energy. We're not going to stay long because we're thinking about retirement. We don't want to work with you. We're not going to fit in the culture. What what we say? What, what, what we think? 
Fabiola said, never thought that the title may not exist. Titles evolve. Hey, that's it. That's it. You're absolutely right. Jay said, I wanted a custodial position for some side hustle money, playtime money. This young cat, not old enough to stop the pimple medicine, <laughs> told me I was overclocked for a pot. Ain't that a trip, Jay? <laughs> Jay said, not old enough to stop the pimple medicine. Still wet behind the ears, right, Jay? <laughs> Look at Stacey Wright, the biases. Right, it is. It is the biases. Linda said, we define the word. Hey, I love it, Linda. That's right. We do define the word energy. Look at what energy we got up in this place. Camille said, I work with a 40-year-old right now, and she calls in weekly with some problem or another. That's what I'm saying, Camille. This is what I'm saying. My daughter telling me all these stories about the people at her job. I'm telling you, it's a person she works with. I, I am not kidding you when I say that he calls out every week. She's like, Mama, why is he still here? I'm like, yeah, he would have been gone if I was over there managing it. He's doing it. She's like, I don't get it. Every single week. Every, and it's, it's, it's like a normal thing. What's up, Adrian? Adrian said, those type of employers are not practicing DEI. Shame on, that's right. Shame on them. They're not. They're not. They're absolutely not. I'm, I want to go through some of these comments. I, I'm going to show you another post over at um, on Twitter. Uh, what's up, Liz? What's up, girl? What applying for your former company's competitor help? I like that strategy, Elizabeth. See, I like that. Now Liz, she's thinking strategically. That's what you do. That's what you do. Listen, when I was at Macy's, we were checking out Wayfair. And oh, Nordstrom's was also a competitor as well. Right. We were checking them out as well, because you're already doing pretty much the same thing. You're hiring the same type of people. Why not go over there? And they competitors loved what they call steal. Or poach. That's what we called it back in the day. Others um, employees. That's a good. I like that. Trish, Trish said, what's up, Trish? I'm open to doing something different at the same or higher. Set. Now, that's the other thing. Trish makes a great point. We don't want to. What's the, what word I want to use, y'all? Settle in terms of our, our, our compensation. But here's the thing, and, and here's the thing. When you go on these interviews and, they, and you ask for feedback or you get feedback, here's a clue, and I'm going to show you this in a second. They'll say something like, um, what's your plan in the next five years? Or, you know, aren't you afraid of getting bored or something like that? That's what they're thinking anyway. It's questions they ask to determine how you're thinking about this role. And I will also tell you another thing that that, that wouldn't be in a study, but y'all know it just like I know it. Some of these people will be intimidated by you and <laughs> what you bring to the, to the table. Like Derek said, I've been told I'm overqualified a few times. Overqualified equals we're not going to pay what you know you're worth. That's true. That's another one too. They don't want to pay. And you can tell them because I have told people that I work with, get ahead of the questions because they're going to ask you, you know, about taking a, a lower position. I had a director that was going to apply for a manager role and they wanted to talk to him. You initiate that conversation because that's the elephant in the room because that, they're going to ask you that. And so you share with them at this stage in my life, based off of the work that I've done, this is where I, I want to be. I'm not interested in climbing the ladder. I've already um, you know, achieved that in my life. At this point in time, at this stage in my life, you get ahead of that conversation. So you can get to the meat of the interview and get that out of their heads. I have another client right now, and I know the reason why he's not being hired. Like it goes back to 1984, but he don't want to change the resume. He don't want to change the LinkedIn. He doesn't want to, he doesn't even want to make a move. I know the reason why he's not getting calls. I know the reason. They're discriminating because of his age and he's highly qualified. And I need to do another video and tell y'all about, uh, I did a video on YouTube about um, expert. It's the last video I posted on my YouTube channel. What does it call y'all? About expert um places you can go to leverage your expertise. But this is something you can do as well. If you're getting feedback or receiving feedback that you're overqualified, position yourself as a, as a consultant. 
or a fractional, um, a fractional consultant. That's something that's on the rise too in this gig economy. I need to, let me write that down because we'll, we'll talk about that as well. It just popped in my head. Because a lot of you all are super smart. I know all of you all have a lot to offer and you can position yourself in the market to be a consultant to some of the, a lot of these startups because they can't afford a, a full-time person, but you can make 300, 500, $700 an hour to be there. Wouldn't you take that for 20 hours a week to consult via Zoom? That's a fractional role. It's different than a freelancer that you see on here. We're not talking about that because those are like when you meet in a deliverable for a, a pro, let's say like, okay, I'm, I got a, um, a project to, I don't know, uh, build an app, right? You have deliverables. You do the um, SOW, statement of work. That's a freelancer. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you all's level. All of you are high level. You can put your work out there, right? As a fractional consultant, get that 20,000, 30,000. And I know I'm talking like, you may not see it, but I know this happens. And I just shared it on a YouTube video. So listen, um, let's see what else y'all saying. The tide has shifted, Camille said, same at my company. So yeah, overqualified, I just can't get with that. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not accepting that and you all should not either. What's up, Doc? I didn't see you there. Doc said, I've been overtly told that I'm overqualified. Insert eye roll, I'm, I know, I know, I know, me too. I know that feeling. Listen, y'all, we're not, we're not accepting that. Don't you dare accept that as feedback. They're intimidated by you. They think they got to pay, pay you. They think you're going to leave. They think you're going to get bored. They think you're not going to integrate well with the younger workers. They think like, like it just said, a cultural fit, all the things. And so to get ahead of that, when you're talking to a recruiter and when, cause they're going to pre-screen you first, and they're going to ask you, why do you want this role? Right? I see you have some great successes and achievements in your career, why do you want this managerial role? Why do you want this independent consultant, uh, independent uh, individual contributor role when you were a people manager? You have to initiate that conversation and not wait for that. Because what a recruiter is going to do is write that up and send it to the hiring manager. You got to get through that gatekeeper because once you get in that interview, you can sell yourself and you can, unfortunately, some people see it as dumbing down but I believe you should showcase your value because here's the thing that employers need to hop on board real quickly. I'm about to show you this. We up right now. Real soon, we're going to be the only demographic that they have to pull from. So do not settle. Don't dumb down. Learn how to position yourselves and learn how to communicate your value so that be so good that they, they won't tell you no. Is that Steve Martin, that book or that line he said? Be so good they can't tell you no? Because they, if they get into a pickle, they're going to need somebody. Don't ever settle. You haven't spent all, these time, all this time and all these years just to take anything somebody throw at you. And if you're worried about the bills need to be paid, Kelly, I got mortgage, I got rent, I got car note, I got this, I got that. Now is the time to be positioning yourself. So when the opportunity comes, you're already prepared. And when it starts to come together, you're ready. But what happens and what I found from doing this and talking to people our age, we're nowhere near ready. Resume hasn't been touched. Don't have a LinkedIn because I don't want to be on social media. I'm private. I'm an introvert. All the things. Nobody can find you. And I'm telling you, and I keep saying it, and I keep saying it, if you position yourself, you can become a mat. It can happen. It can happen. Let me show you this. Let me um, share my screen and show you this thread that I was reading on, um, what's it called? Twitter. Same talk around being overqualified. Let's see. Hold on. Let me, let me pull it up. We're going to talk about it. Y'all all right? Hit that like button if y'all liking the conversation and see how we're, how we're doing. Let me see if y'all can see it. Let me make sure y'all can see it. 
Okay, here's the Twitter thread. Now, this is a recruiter that I follow. He's called the Random Recruiter. He's a headhunter for tech. And he's, he, he was talking about this, this headline. It says, former, former Google employee applies to 50 jobs that he's overqualified for, and he tracks the alarming number of rejections. So I'm reading the comments. This guy, Pete, says, and I like the fact that he's talking about risk. He said, it can be a risk but companies not having conversations with otherwise great employees creates a risk of missing quality people. This is how I feel. And I'm sure you all feel the same way. You know, you're qualified and they're talking about being overqualified. He goes on to say, and this is what I want us to tap into the 50 and olders. Listen up y'all the 50 and olders who get let go due to salary because they pay us a lot of money and others who are bounced because of dysfunctional management, leadership, culture, dynamic raises may gladly take a job for a couple of years or more because it means a family can, still has a home and the bills still get paid. So he's saying, look, it's a risk for companies not to, to, to take us on because they're missing out on quality people. This is how we feel, right? Will some people bolt as soon as they find something that pays more or get bored? Yeah, just like every other employee. But as a guy who's been in this spot, I say a company is missing out if they don't ask questions and see if this is a fit. And he said, this is a great perspective. He said, and people sizing them up with questions like, now here's where we're talking about, here's what to look out for, some of the interview questions. If you're hired, will you commit to working here for X amount of years? So they may say, well, if we give you the job, you know, will you stay for five years? Like, we don't know what's going to happen in our life in five years. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Right. Or they may say, you've managed teams before and this job seems too small for you. Why do you want this job? And that is fair game. He said it's fair game. And he said the answers and body language may tell companies a lot. So if you're asked this question, you know what they're saying. This guy, Elon said, you could ask them if I'm hired, will you, <laughs> will you commit to not laying me off for two years? I love it. <laughs> I, I, listen, I think that's a fair question. Don't y'all? I think it's a fair question. A.R. Wood says, it's going to be fascinating. This is what I was sharing with you earlier. He said, it's going to be fascinating to see how this plays out as mid-level people spend longer. This is us, y'all. Spend longer in the workforce for various reasons, increasing Social Security, Medicare ages. So the ages are increases. They don't want us to retire because they need us. Increased life expectancy. We're living longer. People are having children later, no pensions, and want to take steps back in their final working years. This guy said, the last kid is when I'm 54. The last kid leaves when I'm 54. I plan on immediately pivoting to something with less headaches. Wife is younger than me, so I have to maintain health insurance. Don't we have these thoughts, y'all? He said, my kid is out of here when I'm 54. I'm going to pivot into something else. That's exactly the conversation I had today with the recruiter guy that I was telling you with. Having to pivot to something else. We're not trying, a lot of us aren't trying right now at this stage of in our life to climb the ladder. We don't want the headaches. You go ahead and do that, millennials. You go ahead and do that, Gen Z. Y'all go ahead with that. <laughs> just pay me what I'm worth and let me just do my job and get my health insurance. Y'all with me? So let's read some more of these comments. I thought this was a good post. Y'all can check this out too. Johnny says, in my opinion, overqualified is one of the worst things an applicant can be. I, I'm, I'm with Johnny on that. I'm with Johnny on that. This is a commercial. This Matouche guy said, in my past jobs, we had a woman CFO who became an office manager. She was overqualified and unemployed for months 
and needed to work five more years to get the state pension. He said, although this was in Austria, many believe the social system is great here. I mean, I see that here in the U.S., though. People will take a step back and say, you know what, I just need three more years of work. And then I'm eligible for my pension or I need to get, you know, my health care. What do y'all think? This is a really good thread. This guy, Piat, said, how can you be overqualified? Just hide it on your resume. Ask AI to balance it out. Now, this is what I've been telling my um, uh, uh, client, but he doesn't want to touch anything. And I just, I mean, I'm, I can't force anybody to do anything, but I know that's why he's not getting any hits. This guy, Michael, said, I've interviewed plenty of overqualified overqualified people over the years and have been told H no when we get to the offer stage because they are offended so he's had to get approvals and he said when we get to the offer stage because they are offended the job pays what it pays I once had an employee refuse to do annoying work because she shouldn't have to the risk is real so basically he said he's interviewed people that's been overqualified over the years and he's been told no when we get to the offer stage because they are offended because the job pays what he's okay. So they're talking about the job being paid what it's been paid. This is what I want y'all to do. Tell them no. And I know, I know, I know. But listen, if you don't stand up for what you're worth, guess what? They're gonna lowball you. This let's read this last one by Rachel. She says, sounds like assumptions talking about being overqualified. I went from being a director to an individual contributor and can tell you my loyalty and commitment to the orgs I've worked has been unwaving when I've been given the opportunity to do what I do best. It's incredibly short-sighted to make assumptions like this. I agree with you, Rachel, girl. I agree. I agree. I agree. What y'all saying? What are y'all saying? Gen Z ain't trying to climb either. <laughs> Shaw said Gen Z ain't. You're right. You're right. They don't want to work at all. <laughs> Coretta said, fair question. Much so. Yeah. Yeah. We'll quit at <laughs> Stacy said there. And they won't come back. You're right. You're right. You're right. You are so right. <laughs> they will quit at lunch. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Stacey said, I've seen it happen. Adrian said, definitely a fair question. Yeah, yeah. Trying to get not double. Trish said, I want to be a remote individual contributor until I retire. That is what I'm seeking. I heard that. I heard that, Trish. That's true. And that's possible. That's actually possible. We were talking earlier before some of you got here that I've, we've been sharing inside of the Income Investors Network. That's our private group. You can click the join button next to my picture. I had someone on last Thursday come in and talk about, um, you know, we're talking about side hustles, hustle. So I bring in someone every month to talk to us about earning that extra income. And my thought is, this is something that you can do, passive income, right? Where you don't have to work home hard, you don't have to be outside, you can be work remote, and you can have that income to leverage for um, your future, right? To finance your future. So if that's something you're interested in, we're going to be talking to a lot of different people. Go ahead and hit that join button next to my picture. Also, you all don't forget while I'm thinking about it. If you go to IamKellyJackson.com, IamKellyJackson.com, Kelly with an I, that very first it says subscribe. Get on that newsletter. I send that out weekly now on Thursdays and it'll be just information and insights. I'll also share the replay. And if I did like a podcast or something like that. So make sure you click on that. But I agree with you all. Oh, you're so welcome, Camille. You're so welcome. Jay said, if I don't have the energy and can't keep up with these youngins, my side hustle game wouldn't be this dang strong. I heard that. Jay. Mine either, Jay. I'm with you. I am with you. Mine either. What are they talking about? Who they think we is? Like, we just, I just, I don't, I don't know why they think like that about us, y'all. Why do they think that about us? What's up, Clifford? Clifford said, I have seen firsthand two people who were hired at a previous job quick the next day. It's, it happens. It happens. It's a bunch of money out here, y'all. The reason why I started that Income Investors Network, because we're just going to line up all these different opportunities so that you can decide what's best for you. I have a girl coming in talking about the virtual call center. 
You can sit at home, get you 10 contractors, right? They're going overseas, but they're learning that the language barrier is, is hurting some of the businesses. So now there's people in the U.S. starting these small, you, can have, you don't need, we ain't trying to, you know, have a lot going on, but make that money, y'all. Make that money and invest it, right? Reinvest it. We talked last week about being fruitful and multiplying. First, we got to get the fruit, which is the money, the side hustle. We still got to pay the bills and all of that. We got to get the fruit. And then we multiply it. Be fruitful and multiply it. That's the goal. That's the goal. We just can't have the goal of money. We talked about this last week. I'm bringing it back up again because it's not about just getting the money. I need the money to pay the bills. I need the money to pay the mortgage, the rent, the car note, the car insurance. No, we need the money to multiply that thing. Because we're at an age where we want to think about the future, not in the moment. Not in the moment. We have to change our mindset around just being in the moment because of where we are, the phase in life. Some of us have kids, grandkids, um, family members, houses, and, and just ourselves, if we real about it. If we real about it. A lot of our 401ks we've had to dip into, or we don't have one, period. So we need to get some money so we can make sure that since we're living longer, that the money outlives us. We don't outlive the money. We have to be thinking about that right now. Right now, it's a ton of opportunities out there. So when you're told you're overqualified, I want you to know it's a compliment because they don't have the vocabulary to really tell you that we can't pay you or we're intimidated by you. They don't have the, 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 the you know, the nerve <laughs> to tell you that. And I don't want, if you're watching at me, I want you to look at me in the eyes right now. I don't want you to wear that label either. If you're told that, it's not a rejection. It is not you. You are not a reject. They don't deserve you, as a matter of fact. They don't deserve you. They do not deserve you. Do not take that label and put it on your forehead and walk around and say, I'll never get a job. I've been out of work for this long. I'm overqualified. Nobody wants me. I'm a reject. Nobody likes me. I'm going to keep this whole folder of all my rejections. Why? That's not you. It just means you need to change your strategy. We've been in the game too long, y'all. We've been in the game too long to let somebody else identify us. We know what we're good at. You know what you're good at. Don't let nobody put a label on you. You with me? Don't let nobody put a label on you. They don't know you. They can't sum you up in a 45-minute interview. And don't you take it on. Don't internalize it. I know it feels personal, but that's one person at one job with one opportunity. I posted in the community on our community tab on the channel. 330,000 jobs in March available right now. All you need is how many? One. Don't let nobody tell you. Y'all with me? You better than that. You know what your value is. Do not settle. Don't take less. Get strategic. Budget if you have to. Until you get what you deserve. Like, um, like Trish was saying, she said, right now, I'm just trying to get, I'm just trying to get one thing until I retire. Trish knows what she wants. She's being intentional. She's focused. She's not settling for anything. She knows her worth. She knows her value. Don't y'all settle. If they give you a range of $50 to a million, they're giving you a wide range for a reason. They want to lowball you. You have a number. Don't get desperate. They can smell it. I knew if a person was desperate. When I talked to candidates on the phone, I'm like, oh, I can offer her this. Because I had a budget because they were going to like me as hiring managers if I gave them a candidate and I was below budget. So we lowball because we get the accolades as a recruiter. You know, Kelly bought me this wonderful candidate. Sanja, she is great. She is great. She's got all these years of experience. I know we can give her 95, but Kelly, go for 80. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell Sanja. I'm going to call her right now. And I'm going to say, hey, Sanja, this is Kelly. I just talked to the hiring manager. They are so excited to have you. 
They love your experience. They love the interview. You did such a phenomenal job. I want to make you an offer. They're coming in right now at 82.5, 82.5. And then you'll have performance review. The target is 15% after 12 months of working here. And they are, I would just amp it up because that's what we're told to do. Now, in Sandra's mind, she knows, dog, I really want it. 97 or 100. <clears throat> but I'm selling that thing. They're really excited. They have opportunities for growth in there. They have professional development. You, there's conferences they're going to give you stipend for. Our health insurance, they're playing, paying 60% of the premiums for you. Once you get in and perform at a high level, I, am, I know you'll hit target. And Sandra's going to say, okay, I'm excited too. I'm going to go ahead. I'm, okay. Oh, okay. Because I need to, okay, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to take it. Awesome. This is so, so excited for you, Sanja. I can't wait to have you. What's a good start date for you? Okay, I'm going to send you the background check information. Get that completed within 48 hours. I'll send you the offer letter over. Go ahead and sign. And then I'm waiting for the offer letter from Sanja. And then I'm going to pressure Sanja. Because if I don't have it back within a couple hours, I can't call that hiring manager and say, it's done. It's done. Great job, Kelly. Great job. Wow, how did you do that? They're emailing my manager. Kelly locked in a candidate under budget. And I did the job. I'm, do, I'm, I'm good. This is how it go, y'all. I got the script down pat. You slow that recruiter down and say, hold on. What's the salary range? You know, it's really based on experience and, you know, we like to be fair. We would like to come, um, like to come in at market rate. So it's really based on experience. What were you looking at? I want a number from the candidate first, because then I know what to say afterward. So we're going to tussle because I want you and I want, but I want, but I'm telling you all this because I know how it goes. Oh, we absolutely get fair market rate. We definitely want you to be happy. We want you to come in and be, um, you know, happy about your compensation, about your full compensation package. Tell me what you're thinking about. And by then the candidate said, well, you know, I really wanted to stay close to where I'm at. And, um, you know, right now I'm at 125. Um, that's fantastic. But here's the thing I want you to think about, though. I want you to think about the fact that when you come and work for us, have you worked for a big brand name like Microsoft before? No, I really, and you know the opportunities you'll get inside once you get inside of Microsoft, the innovation, all the different projects, you'll get exposure to all the different teams. Have you had that type of exposure before? No, I really, I really haven't. So you really want to think about what's motivating you now. I want you to think about what's motivating you. Is it compensation? Because sometimes there's, you can place more value on what you're exposed to versus what you can, this is how I go, y'all. This is how it goes. But if you stand firm on that thing, because I had a couple candidates that did that. I'll never forget this guy at Microsoft. He broke me down. And the smart thing he did, he put it in writing. That was smart. Because when you're on the phone with a recruiter, they can say anything. He put it in writing. He said, I have my master's degree. Not only do I have my master's degree, I'm on GitHub and I've created five apps. I worked on this project. He broke that thing down. I had to go to the hiring manager and I said, well, you know, I'm on the phone with Willie and he's not accepting, you know, offer he wants, you know, 175 or he's, he's going to look for some other opportunities. The range was 190. It's like, okay, go ahead. Let's give them 175. You have to stand firm. In terms of desperation, I saw what you said. Desperation looks like we play, we recruit, well, I'll say experienced recruiters. Like I just, I just played it out for you. No script, right? I just played it out for you. So I'm going to call your bluff. I'm going to say, hey, doc, so, you know, what's your range? What, what, what's your salary requirements? well, I really kind of wanted to just see, you know, what you guys were offering. 
well, you know, I can, I can help you better, right? Because I, we really want you here. The hiring manager loves your experience, your background. You had a great interview. Give me something to work with. Give me something to start with. Well, I was thinking around 95 to, you know, maybe 97, 98. Well, this one's, this one's at 85 and that's firm. So we'll stay there. But here's the thing. Once you get in, you'll get your performance review in a year. If you hit target, which is 15%, that will be added on. So you get in, you prove yourself. We also have, you know, 60% off. I'm selling that thing. I'm selling it. And the reason why I was asked to staff the Atlanta Beltline for the city of Atlanta, because I was that good. So when, it, when the tables turn, and I'm talking to a recruiter that's got six, seven, five years of experience, I know I'm getting my money because I know the game. I'm telling you the game. Stand firm. Let them give you a number first, even if it's a range. You tell them my goal is to be at the top of that range. Well, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure if we can go to the top of the range. Well, it is a range, right? Yeah, there's, there's a range. You call that recruiter's bluff because a lot of them are going to be younger than you anyway. And I'm giving you the game. And of course, you do it professionally. You say, Stacey, what's the, what's, what's, what's the range that you all have for this, this position? I'm super excited about the opportunity. Can you share with me what the range is? Well, we really want to know what are your salary requirements? What do you need to have? What will, what will motivate you to, to become a part of our team? Well, I really want to know what the range is. This way it'll help me. I need to talk to my wife. I need to talk to my, my husband. I need to, you know, I need to go and have that conversation. And I need a number. I need something to work with in order for me to be, even consider the opportunity. Can you stand firm? Y'all with me? Let me get off that. You're welcome, Stace. That's it, Stace. Always write it down. I had to teach my daughter that. I had to teach my daughter that she was so happy. She's like, Mom, this is why. That's right. That's why you put everything in writing. Because the recruiter wants to look good to the hiring manager. To close that deal, we got him. We got her. We got Trish. And I got her underneath budget. We look good, y'all. We get accolades for that. But I'm telling you, stand firm. You go in. You can say it even to the recruiter. Listen, here's, here's what I'm, um, you know, this is what I'm looking at. If it's not in this range, then Oh, the position is uh, one to, but also a recruiter has to fill the role because they are, they get some of them performance bonuses. And if you have all the positions and I tell my clients, don't give a number at all, go through a couple rounds, get them to like you because once they meet you and have an interaction with you and you wow them and you blow their minds, because I should tell them how to, how to interview and how to interact and blow their minds. Walk away and be memorable. You want, to, want them to have an experience with you. You know how y'all sitting here and you watching me and you glued in and you're listening? You want, to have, you want to be an experience. You want them to remember you in that interview. When you go in there, you talk about, you know what you know. You didn't get this far not knowing what you, what you know. You got this far because you know what you know. Go in there and blow them, blow their minds. It's not an interrogation. This is a conversation. Y'all need me. That's how you have to go in there. Talk your stuff. You've been doing this for too long to be intimidated by an interview. Stop it. <laughs> All right, I'm done. I'm done. You're welcome, Doc. Doc said, I never give a range or no. That's right. I asked for the range that has been budgeted for the position. There you go. There you go. Stacey said, that's me. Was this helpful, y'all? Hit that like button. Y'all liking it. Y'all liking it. You're welcome, hon. Cover yourself. That's it. Stacey said, would she get rejected if she challenged the bottom line? No. No. That's, it's a negotiation. You go in knowing you're about to negotiate. Don't ever take the first number. Ever. They're going to, they, let me, I, uh, just like I said, there's a range. And they'll tell you, this pays 130. You know, I was really looking at 142. If I can't get whole, and what whole is, if maybe they'll give you a base of 125, and there's bonus potential to get you 145. So just say, if you can make me whole, it, this definitely be an offer that I would consider. 
So sometimes they can make it up. And I want you to also think about your vacation. That's dollars to a company. If you get 15 days, you get two weeks, that's dollars to a company. So you're looking at all of that. And you break that down to the recruiter because they're not thinking, most of them these days, they're not thinking about that. You say, well, I know I get 15 days. If we did the math, that's 2,000. So I'm currently at a base of 125 plus that 2,000, that's 127. I need to get to 135. If you can make me whole, this would be definitely an opportunity that I would consider. So she got to come up with some stock. She got to come up with some equity. She got to come up with giving me more vacation. If you really want that job, because some of them you really want, but you know, once you go in, that's it. Get that money on the front end. Once you in, that's it. Y'all know how it go. 2% increases during performance review. Or sometimes they say, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to give. Get that money when you get in the door. Sit, stand there and negotiate. They know it's going to be a negotiation. They're ready for it. That's why they have a range. And you ask, what, is this the top of the range? The middle of the range? 75 percentile of the range? Where is this on the range? They're not going to be expecting that question. So where is 140 on the range? Well, it's the 75 percentile on the range. So you know kind of where you're at. So where's the top? You know, how much room do I have for growth? Well, they'll tell you, well, if we put you at the top, there's no room for growth. Okay, what is the, what is the career path for the role? Y'all with me? I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. What y'all saying? Sandra said, I was excited about my 4% merit increase. I mean, I'm thankful for it, but it was only 2,500 before taxes. That's great. The 4% is rare, Sandra. <laughs> Let me tell you, 4% is rare, my friend. What's up, Chris? I didn't see you sneak in here. Was an eye over St Stacey, was that helpful, y'all? Kelly Jackson, you know what I tend to do when job hunting. I always look for the major well-known corporation. That's good, Trish. That's good. Sometimes, though, we want to think about some of those mid companies and some of the smaller companies. I know we, we've been told, and there's also a stigma on the startups, but you can do your research and you can look and see what their financial, um, what the finance look like. Like some of the startups, think about if we would have gotten into uh, Airbnb. And, or if we would have gotten into a DoorDash, you know, from a corporate perspective, we probably would have gotten equity. So I don't want you to miss out thinking about the big brand names because a lot of those are the ones that lay off, right? If we went, if we were to went for some of the fame companies, the Facebooks, the Netflix, the Amazons, the Googles, right? After COVID, everybody was going for a fame company and they were hiring like crazy. And what happened, they overhired. So you don't, you, we've never seen, it was unprecedented in 2023, 150,000 people at one time for one company. Now we can see, you know, 25, 50 maybe, but 150,000 people. We don't want to be in that position. Again, at our age, at this phase and stage in life and in our careers, we want to think strategically. Let me look at a mid-sized company that's doing well. There's enough information out there. You can even ask chat GPT. Give me a list of companies because here's another here's another uh, thing for you. Not just Trish. I'm talking to everybody to um, Trish. But even though we're global, all of us are global, and I want you to think global. Companies or employers they they have a a preference for those that are in their backyards. So I would say ChatGPT, give me the top ten companies. Um, mid-sized company, a small and mid-sized company in um, Arkansas. And then go through their website. Don't go through LinkedIn. Don't go through Indeed. Go straight to the website and see if there's opportunities there for you. There's so many small companies. When I'm doing YouTube videos here on the channel, I, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. And I'm like, this will be two hours. They're not going to watch this for two hours. But I want to give y'all all the remote opportunities. So I try to put it in bite-sized size chunks so you guys can go. And I'm thinking about us and our demographic. What will be, you know, easy for us in terms of remote work and, and working and stuff like that. What else, y'all? What else? Was this helpful? Hit that like button for me, y'all. Shout out to all of my members. I see you in green. I see you. I see you. I see you. <laughs> Don't forget to join us. We had a good time last Thursday. We had a guest, special guest. I was sharing at the top of this that um, 
we had a special guest that shared with us the Amazon storefront. So if we're thinking about side hustles, if we're thinking about multiplying our money, right? And we're thinking about side hustles. We ain't trying to hustle, hustle. <laughs> we're trying to get some money so that we can flip that money, right? We have someone, so I have some people, some guests coming in. Hit that join button. It's right next to my picture on the channel. Just go to Kelly Jackson, Kelly with an I. Hit that um, join button and you'll be inside. On next Thursday, we're having another session. I think I'm going to be teaching on um, a topic then, but once a month, I bring in a guest. And if that's something you're interested in, it's called Income Investors Network because we talk about earning income. We talk about investment opportunities. We talked about royalties. I want to I want to go a little deeper on that because I found another site. I think Stacy was asking. I found another site. I'm going to share that with you all. And then um, investing in wine. So we're thinking about things that appreciate. We're thinking about things that we can invest our money in and even fractional investing where it's not a lot of money but we know it can be there for us in the future. So again, I'm thinking about us and our age and things like that, that will, will help us. So if you're interested in stuff like that, hit that join button uh, next to my picture. What's up, Anne? Sorry, what if you are starting a new career? How do you get a top salary even if you work for 30 years? Well, it depends on what, you are, what your skill set is, right? So you can get top salary if you're... Um, you mean if you're pivoting in, so it's a it's a field or a space you've never worked in before, but you just have, you have work experience for 30 years. Do I have that right? Is that what you mean? When you say new career, I guess that's what I'm trying to understand. Are you pivoting from a, like if I'm a recruiter now, I want to be in, um, I don't know, welding or something. Is that what you mean? You're welcome, Adrian. What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> Oh, I'm so glad. Okay, so if you're pivoting, first you want to align yourself. So something good I was talking to when I shared with you all, for those of you all that missed it, I was telling um, everyone that I talked to another recruiter today. And he was saying how the landscape has changed and that he's pivoting. So one of the things I share with him is for us recruiters, because I know some of us, like myself, we also worked with um, contract labor or contingent labor. So a, a, another um, a position we could pivot into is um, managing vendors and contingent labor and all of that. So if that's what you mean, and you want to, if you can, align your skills that's easily transferable to your new career. That's an easier pivot than going from manufacturing and all of a sudden you want to be in tech. You want to make sure you have skills that are easily, you can take them with you is mobile over here. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Now to get top salary, you're going to be able to, you have to be able to showcase, especially if you get past the gatekeeper, which is the recruiter, when you're in that interview, if you're able to sell why you are of value to that employer, then you absolutely can get top dollar because you can say not only do I bring the skills that you need, I also have experience and familiar with this. So I'm bringing my skills from my old career and I have these transferable skills that's going to be of value to you already. So the key to that is being able to tell a career story, a narrative that is of value to them. Not going there talking about I did this, I did this, I, 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 I but you're thinking about that employer and what their need is. Here's how I can add value to you. I told you about the case study. Why well, I didn't tell you, Ann, I'm just talking out loud. The case study of the girl, um, I can't think of her name, but she wanted to work at Airbnb. And I keep saying, we're gonna do, I'm gonna talk through this case study and I, I have to put it on the calendar for us to go through. She wanted to work at Airbnb. She got on LinkedIn and she said, boy, I really wanna work for Airbnb. She was in marketing. She went to town and she just kept posting, oh boy, I really want to work for Airbnb. And she said, I know Airbnb is going over in Asia. Here's what I would do if I worked at Airbnb. I already have family over there because I'm, I'm part Asian and I know that the landscape looks like X, Y, and Z. I would put some homes, some host homes in this area of the east side over in Singapore, and this is what I would do. I would also do a tour for when people come over. Here's how I would do it. And she did a whole graph. These are her skills. 
So she was in a whole nother field as a marketer. She really wanted to work for this company that was all about um, people staying in homes, different than what she had. So I share that to say, be able to share your value or communicate your value in a way that they're intrigued. Remember, I just said be memorable. So you can get that top dollar. But be ready to communicate your value that's going to resonate with that employer because it's all about them. Let me know if that's helpful. I know we over time, y'all. Are we all right? Did I miss any questions? I know I did. What's up? What's up, y'all? Was this good? Hit that like button if you liked it. Was it helpful? Y'all always, I always want to know that it's helpful, you all. Okay, I think y'all got it. Y'all got it. To make YouTube my side hustle, but it's progressing very. That's okay, Trish. You're doing it. You're doing, you're doing a lot more than most. Getting started. Just keep at it. Just, just start. That's why I'm sharing all of these other side hustles. I'm putting it out there, y'all. I do free, I do these for free on Tuesday. I do free videos, right? That you have access to. I have the community, the income investors network. Like I'm giving you the information that all you got to do is start. That's it. Don't worry. I got you. Get in the, get in the, the member. I got you. I got people coming in here that will help. If you don't start, I, I don't know what else to do. I don't know what else to do. I'm doing this because I wish I had someone to tell me and show me about income opportunities, investing opportunities, and networking opportunities, or how to, how to, how to play the corporate uh, politics game. I didn't have that. It was all trial and error. It was all trial and error. I have a client right now going through, they're trying to push him out. Here's what you do. We're going to document this thing because they're going to pay you. <laughs> they're going to pay you. You show up every day. You stay under the radar. They're going to pay you. So I know the game now. I know the game. But you have, you, have, you, have to, you have to take this on yourself, you all. There's a reason why they keep talking about, and I know we are over time, but they keep talking about the gig economy. You all heard me talk earlier about fractional consulting. These terms are popping up because this is what's happening. Trish is already doing it. She said, I'm doing it right now. It's slowly. That's okay. Everything is a process. Nothing is overnight. Forget about these Instagram schemes of getting money overnight. It ain't real. It ain't happening overnight. It's not. I can tell you, it's not happening overnight. But you have to start. You have to start. That's it. Just start. Figure out what it is that you want to do. If it's your career, just like... um was saying about pivoting she's saying i want to pivot right and and saying and said you know what i'm starting a new career i want i want to pivot she's taking the steps don't sit there you all and get information not just from me but online and just get information get information get it. take the step take baby steps it's okay it's okay because it gets you closer and closer and closer to your goal but if you're sitting there What's happening if you're sitting there? Nothing. Nothing. Do something. You gotta, you gotta move. You gotta move. They can get you if you're sitting still. That's what hunters do. That's how the deer gets shot. That's how the squirrel gets shot. That's how the duck gets shot. Because it got it stood still. It's harder to shoot you if you're moving. Keep it moving. Y'all with me? Hey, Ann says, you know your stuff. I love it. I love it. We all right, y'all? There you go, Stace. There you go. There you go. Fractional consultant. That's Stacey. That girl, boy, I'm telling you, y'all better watch out. Y'all better hook up with her. That girl, no. <laughs> Helpful, Doc. Okay, cool. Cool. All right. I love y'all. I I'm, uh, apologize. Kept y'all over. Y'all stay with me, though. <laughs> if this was helpful, y'all. Did I miss any questions? Going once, going twice. Going once, going twice. 
Listen, if y'all want to talk through some of this, if you're not sure which way you want to go, and maybe um, you just want some guidance. Like I said, I do this because I didn't have anyone. Uh, if you just want some guidance on, okay, Kelly, I'm thinking about this. What are your thoughts on this? I talked to a few of you all. We've had some, I was on the phone last, I think it was last Friday. I don't know if she's on here, but um, reached out, had a great conversation. Great conversation. Um, go to iamkellyjackson.com. I think it's a second button or whatever. And it's a form you'll fill out just so I know what you're talking about and what you want, what your goal is. And then we can have a conversation about it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter. I give insights in there. I put the replay also in there. If I do a podcast, I'll put that in there. Anything I got going on, I'll put in there. And also things that are beneficial to you. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. If you go to iamkellyjackson.com, that first little thing, it says subscribe, you're, you'll be on the newsletter. So you'll get that. Typically try to do it on Thursdays. So you'll get all of that as well. And if you need some consulting or just want some guidance and direction, I'm happy to help you with that. I think I have a button there as well. All right, we okay? We all right? All right. Thank y'all for hanging out for me. I apologize for being over. Y'all know I get passionate about it. That's how you know, right? If a person really loves what they do, right? <laughs> That's how you know. That's how you know. If they just giving you fluff, if they just giving you fluff. I told you about the guy. I told you a couple of weeks ago, I had a guy reach out and he wanted some help because he was in a toxic work environment. And he said, I have to be honest with you, Kelly, at the end of our conversation, he said, I, I was, I've been looking for a career coach and I talked to a few other people and I'm like, you know, that's cool. You know, people, you look around and he said, he said, but you're different. And I said, how so? I should have shut up, but you know, I'm nosy. <laughs> I want to know. I'm like, how so? I told y'all this right last week. He said, cause you called me out. You called me on my stuff because I don't want, I just, Regardless of you, if you hire me or not, I still, I don't want you to be medi mediocre. Why are you sitting in coach and you, like, we only got one life. Get in business class. Just get there. We only got one life. You hold the money in your bank account anyway. Let's have some experiences. Stop being mediocre. We are not average. Somebody on the YouTube, if you go to the community tab and underneath the picture with the labor thing, I had a dialogue with a guy. And he said, by, for now, we have to do two jobs. And I, he said, the average person, right? And it wasn't, it wasn't a debate or anything. He was just like, that because it's true. The average person needs two jobs. That's why we're talking about side hustle. I said, what if we stop being average? I want us to elevate because we get one shot at this. We don't want to get to heaven and God say, here's what I had for you. But you decided to sit there and not do anything. I would be mad. I don't know about y'all. <laughs> We need to go and get everything that, you know, he got for us. But we got to tap in. We got to go for it. We got to move. We can't be, be like, like that deer and be, you know, in the headlights. All right. Y'all know I keep talking, right? Let me be quiet. <laughs> okay. Clifford said, I had a question on how often to follow up on post information. How often? So you follow up. First, you send your thank you letter, right? Your thank you email. If you haven't heard anything, let's say in about three, four days, let's say four days, then send a, send a follow-up email and just say, you know, hi, you know, wanted to reach out. Hey, Stacey, I'm reaching out. I had an interview on March 26th. I wanted to follow up just to see if there was any feedback. I'm really excited about the potential for working for Coca-Cola. Any uh, information that you can give me, any updates that would Greatly appreciate it. So you did it four days and then give it a three day. That way you have a seven week time span. So you did it on, on day four, then again on day three. And then I move on. I'm not going to focus on one thing. I'd move on. I still be thinking about it. But if you want to use that as a gauge, you can do it that way. All right, y'all. Love you lots. Did we have a good time? Do we have a good time, y'all? What's up, Loretta? I say that all the time. I want everything. There you go, Lo. That's it. That's how. Y'all, we want everything. We want everything. We didn't made it half a century, most of us. 50 years. We didn't made it this far. Let's not. We didn't come this far to settle. We getting everything there is for us. <laughs> everything. 
everything. <laughs> All right. Love y'all lots. I'll see you next Tuesday. Y'all be good and be safe. See you same place. Elizabeth said, aging myself, sometimes you have to be like Mario and go backwards to move. I love that game. Don't get me started, Elizabeth. See, he's trying to get me started. I actually have a Nintendo game. I don't know how to hook it up, though. <laughs> but I would, Donkey Kong and Mario. Y'all yeah, know my favorite game, Centipede. If I could find that, I would pay top dollar for that. But I can't find it. Centipede was my, I would get lost. Y'all wouldn't hear from me on two. <laughs> I'll be like, where is Kelly? <laughs> She playing Centipede. I love that game. All right, y'all. <laughs> see, Elizabeth got me going. All right, see y'all. Good night. Good night. Bye, Ann. Bye, y'all. Bye, 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 bye. Have a good night. Have a good weekend, too. Bye.